And I know that voters in Nevada, they want someone that will support the president and his agenda. It is a weirdly weird environment right now. Anything can happen. Welcome to Timelines of Success. Today we have Tom Heck. He's a candidate for United States Senate in the great state of Nevada. This is the second time running. He's an Air Force Academy grad, and we're not at UNR Innovation Center. We're going to talk more about politics because you were on this before. Thanks, Bill. I'm glad to be here. You're glad. Well, you're out campaigning. How's the campaign going? Campaign's going good. We're, we're getting the word out. We're spending a lot of, a lot of effort on social media. We're, we're targeting people. Um, very receptive. We have over 50,000 views on, on social media, on YouTube. And we're over like 200,000 impressions, which are just a short shot at my pic- my name and, and picture. And uh, doing well, doing well, Bill. Right, and the impression can be that first six seconds or it can be on the side ad. So there's, there's a combination of two things. You know, this is, he's a challenger. You've got, uh, you're going against Dean Heller. Uh, Tartanian dropped out. Tartanian could have won this election, no doubt in my mind. And uh, you're running. And you probably have the most name recognition right now. I do. I, I have still some from, from previous election when the... Previous guy ran uh, w- with my name, and uh, I'm going to be out there talking to people. But it's they're very receptive to to me. You know, I briefly just tell them that I'm running for U.S. Senate. So they say you're running against Dean Heller, and they say, "Yeah," I says, "Absolutely," and I'm going to beat him. And they say, "We're voting for you." It's a real quick sell. Well, you went to one of the leadership schools. You went to the Air Force Academy. I did the second leadership school to West Point, of course. <laughs> I am not sure about that one. Well, it's, it, it, it blossomed out of West Point. Right, the uh, first well, two years. Well, uh, we, well, at least we had a nicer places to live anyway. True, and you got statues. I didn't have to do a tent very often. <laughs> you did a little bit the first year, and you're uh, civil engineers later on, so I'm sure you did some field work. Yeah, we did a little bit of field work. Yeah, but you have nice quality field operations, that's for sure. That's for sure. So anyway, driving forward at the Air Force Academy, what lessons did you take away that have helped you later on in life and helped you in this campaign? Well, I think the big one was to, to just learning not to quit. And uh, no matter how difficult or how challenged it would be, uh, even in like an election, uh, you just persevered and, and pressed on. And ultimately, you were successful because you never gave up. So looking back at your four years, plus you went a year to prep school because of football, you're recruited for football. What advice would you give to the incoming cadets of all the academies? Well, I always tell them, I, I think that's the big thing, is that they need to take each day at a time um, try to do the best they can at what they're asked to do and don't give up. And uh, if they do that, they'll be successful and graduate four years later. Now, what we're going to do now is we're normal timeline interviews. We talk more about the person. You can go back and we'll have a link to Tom's interview for a couple of years ago. But I want to talk a little bit more about his campaign then we'll talk about his life and success principles. I'm going to take this little card from him and ask him about what's on this card because I think this is the core of his campaign. And you're running against an incumbent with six five million $5 million who the big thing is what he's done is he's, he's been he's gone back and forth in his votes he didn't support trump yeah, he's a flip-flopper he didn't support trump but these are st- there's a really standard basic ideas that you have so your first one is balance the budget and and balance the budget reduce taxes or something like that it was cut spending i think the big thing well, is spending, to cut okay. spending and uh yeah we, we need to balance the budget but you, you can't get to that point unless you start cutting spending and we haven't done it right. we're, we're pressing up six percent every year in the budget that's so true you could balance the budget by raising taxes well, but that's not the answer. We don't and need to grow government. government. We need to stop growing government and get government out of people's lives. Very good. Second point is support the Second Amendment and the rights of law-abiding citizens. Well, yeah, people need to be able to defend themselves, and it takes a good guy with a gun to stop a bad guy with a gun. It's pure and simple. So build a wall. Build a wall, chain migration, merit-based immigration is where we need to get to, and I absolutely support President Trump on that. You know, it's really interesting. That's seeing a lot of news today, and it's amazing our laws probably— need to be changed, this catch and release. What do you think about that? It's just abhorrent. If you can't seal your borders, uh, it, it's, uh, you just don't really have a country. I mean, I heard just this morning, too, California is now going to provide free medical care to illegal immigrants. Can you imagine that? How, how unconscionable. Well, you know, they're human beings. Well, absolutely. But can America take care of the whole world? I don't think no, we have- No, they can't. In fact, I was in Afghanistan- Everyone in Afghanistan would love to be in America. If they could come here today, they'd 90%. Well, that's true with most countries in the world. That's true. So I want to talk a little bit more about California. And we talked about build a wall and go into more detail. California is a mess right now. It's a mess. Well, it is. I mean, they're losing like 9,000 businesses a year. Uh, People are leaving in droves. They're coming to Nevada and Oregon and Washington. Worse is they've got this ultra-rich upper class 
and they've got the very poor and nothing in between. That's right. And it's getting to the point where the people with money are running out of money and, and this uh, welfare thing is not going to be able the to middle, continue. middle class is definitely starting to come over. And they're, they're, they're struggling. Out. Yeah. Orange County. And then you've got their whole state's a sanctuary state. How can that be? How can you have a sanctuary state? I don't know. It just makes no sense to me because you have all these services. People say they don't cost it. Well, they're going to the schools. We're providing special classes for them. Um, there's a lot of them that are on California welfare, and it's a real problem for and, the budget. And what do you think about the Oakland governor? Who's, it's okay to give a warning to uh, the illegal criminals, the criminals too, uh, that ICE is coming in. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sad, but but you're putting Americans at risk. It's just unconscionable that they would be doing that. Now, there's legislation trying to be introduced to say that, that she should be jailed or anybody who does that, who interferes with law. I think it's already against the law to, um, to you know, give a heads up to cr- uh, criminals that well, the they police are coming I, I'm not sure it is. They passed that law in Texas not, not uh, maybe last month, and they basically may have, may have criminalized any, any of the leadership in the various local governments that, uh, that do something like that. I think it's already, you can't do it, but she did it, and she didn't get in trouble. It's California. Well, California's not enforcing the laws. They're not enforcing all kinds well, of laws. The federal government's not enforcing the laws, it looks like. Against well, you, they can only do so much with their footprint in California. <laughs> so the next one, build a wall. That was the last one. So strengthen the military. What's that? Well, you know, we have these the best and brightest that we ask to go risk their lives. We need to provide them the best possible weapon systems, equipment, and tools to, to defend American principles and American way of life and our freedom. Support our vets. Absolutely support our best. You know, my dad had PTSD. He was a Marine from World War II in Korea. And we do, we made a promise to them, and we need to take care of them. Here's a big one. Your opponent, Dean Heller, voted against, I mean, when the president was there and he knew it wasn't going to be vetoed, he voted to eliminate, completely eliminate Obamacare. Then when the Republicans had control, including the president, he voted twice to not repeal Obamacare. What's wrong with him? I don't know what's wrong with, 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 with Heller, but I know that he voted for repeal six times with Obama and then voted against repeal twice, and then finally he okay. voted for Obamacare repeal light. I think it's seven times. It never passed. Right. And he's like one of the top guys who was one of the top five who the president— He, he talks one way and votes another. That's what he does. And that's really upset a lot of folks. It is. I, the people I talk to, they're, they're not upset. They're angry. Plus, you know, he was definitely, now I, I can relate to people not supporting Trump during the primary, who they're supporting other candidates. But when he became the candidate for the Republican Party, he didn't support him. Well, he was a never Trumper before he was a sometime Trumper, before he was an I love Trumper. I guess he's a I love Trumper now. I don't think he's really I love Trumper because I saw that picture with him and Trump and you can see his face. Well, it is. You it's think Trump pretty, likes him? No, I, I, Trump is very, very big on loyalty. And he doesn't hire people that are not loyal to him. He doesn't trust Heller, I'm sure of it. Would you say the establishment likes him? Oh, yeah, the establishment loves Heller. Yeah, the Republican establishment loves Heller, and they think he can win. I'm going to beat him. They're going to be shocked. (laughs) Well, we've got to get your name out there. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. And we need to send people to TomHeck.org. Yeah, TomHeck.org. And also, we need money so we can get the word out more. You know, folks, uh, Tartanian had a great opportunity to win this election. He had a campaign set in place. You came in and he left. Why do you think? Well, he... I think that was great for me. I expected him to leave. I, I'm not sure why, but I expected him to leave, and I, well, oh, I'm the guy. He was going up against uh, Heller. Was hitting him with negative ads left and right. Well, business. it was it was it was a it was a early. It was a corral bar, brawl. Yeah, it was uh, it was rough. Anyway, the next issue you have is 15 percent flat tax. Well, I th- I think the, the the point of that one is is businesses don't pay taxes only people do and and legislatures and people think that let's just tax more on the businesses people pay those because whoever uses the services and products pay those taxes and a flat tax is fair to everybody right now ninety percent of the taxes ninety percent of the taxes are paid by five percent of the population true reduce regulation we just need to continue to do that Trump came in office said two regs go away for every new one. I think he's gotten it up to 22, and we need to tend, continue to cut regulation because that's going to make our economy boom, and it's booming now. Hey, you know, we're just talking about an issue that happened over in California and Oakland. It just happened, apparently. They had an ordinance, the city of Oakland, that you can't barbecue in your backyard or something of that nature. 
Well, they did, and and uh, you know there, there was someone that called in, and they made it to, into a racist incident when it really was about following the law. And California just doesn't seem to be able to follow the well, law. The the environmentalists made these regulations. Well, yeah, to, it was basically it risks fire. You know, they have a serious fire problem well, in the summers. Not just fire. I think the charcoal and the pollution, things of that na- nature, is one of the reasons why they've outlawed. And there's, there's also a fire danger. That's true. That's right. But that's kind of an interesting issue. Um, California is highly regulated. And they have so over regulated. Highly, yeah, over regulated. But it's ironic if you don't and they it's selective. When you have too many regulations, you can't enforce them all. It just doesn't happen. Or selective enforcement. Well, it it just gets to be impossible when when you know the police are always second guessed on whether to enforce it or not. And every time someone enforces something, they claim racism. That's a problem. Not we, every we gotta, time, but there's a specific case well, on yeah. this and it's happened more and more. But but it's happening I, more and more. I, I mean think that's the press too. I just in social media, it's building in social media. And so, when you don't like the answer, you you, you can't you can't plead racism. You got to follow the law. And if you don't like the law, people need to get together and vote for people that'll change the laws. And then your last talking point. For more information, go to tomhack.org. Yes, go to tomhack.org. We're happy to take some money because we will we need to put out some mailers and your support, and we're going to win this election. But but go online to YouTube. Also look in Twitter and Facebook. I'm there. Just just put in tomheck.org or Tom Heck and for U.S. Senate, you'll find me in all those places. Again, we, we have a lot of people looking at us on, on uh, Facebook and Twitter and to YouTube. Tell your neighbor. Tomheck.org. Amazing things can happen. And anybody that reads this, I would ask you to tell 10 more of your people if you really want a true conservative for the U.S. Senate in Nevada. And if you got email, forward them on email. Absolutely. Form forward to your home email list. Like on Facebook. Facebook. YouTube, Twitter. We, uh, subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe right on YouTube. You got to log on your, through your Gmail, folks. Yep, sounds good. And again, I'm the true conservative. I want to be your voice in Washington for common sense solutions it, and successful outcomes. I want to truth tell at the expense of political correctness and only do those, do those things that make sense. And with that, we're going to go to a break. This is Bill, and I want to thank the Silver Sponsors for their financial support for the videos as well as our podcasts. The first person to support us uh, as silver sponsor was Ed and Georgette Strom, then Ray and Carolyn Rocha. Other sponsors are U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation and Gary Duarte. My wife, Karen, is a real estate broker here in Reno, Nevada. Tom Heck for U.S. Senate. Sharon Angle for U.S. Congress. Eugene Hoover for Lieutenant Governor. Brett Jones for Lieutenant Governor. Craig Muller for Attorney General, Wes Duncan for Attorney General, Derek Urar for State Treasurer, Gary Smith, Candidate 16 Senate District, Kim Meyer for Sheriff here in Washoe County, Sherman Box for Sheriff again in Washoe County, Andrew Caldwell for Washoe County School Board Trustee, Aji Shiraji for Mayor of Reno, Eddie Lorton for Mayor of Reno. And finally, without their support, we couldn't do things like this. We have literally had this month 20,000 views, and that's because of our marketing and support of the uh, Silver Sponsors. And as you can see, um, overall, we've had 124,000 views for the life of it, 736,000 impressions. Impressions is what you see on the side. You'll find these on uh, websites as well as YouTube and Google. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the second half of this interview. Coming off of the break, we're going to talk about life and success principles. So the first one is never give up. Absolutely. I I just think that's the best one. I I think I learned that in high school. I played football in high school, and uh, I came up in a family that basically my parents were very big on never letting us quit something. We had to finish it, and if we wanted to do something else later, that was fine, but it was never quit, and and that has carried... uh, uh, very well for me. It's true in the election. You know, I ran in 2016. I'm running again. I'm going to win this time. But you just can't quit. And uh, ultimately, I'll, I outlast people. Principal decision making is number two. I'm a fan of, of Peter Drucker, who is a famous management guru. And uh, he published a book, The Effective Executive. And he talks about very few decisions. You know, it takes special analysis to, to, to figure out. And so I'm a, I'm a fan of his uh, principle based solution. You know, a principle like always do the right thing, uh, you know, do the right thing for the right reason. It's those type of principles you look at when you make a decision. And always do the right thing. That was the next thing. I have 
I think that my time at the academy has always allowed me to, to speak up and do the right thing, no matter how challenging the circumstances or situation or how challenging the people to deal with. I w- I've always been able to stand up and, and do the right thing, and I'll do that for, for you voters when I head to Washington in January. Very good, Tom. And then finally, since we're in Nevada, we're going to talk about what do you like about Nevada? What's the draw here for folks? Oh, I love Nevada. Nevada is just a great state. The, the dry climate uh, makes it very nice to be in. It's a little warm in the summer, but I love golf and I love uh, skiing in the winter. But but most all, you know, there's those days in April when I go skiing in the morning for a couple, two, three hours, and then I go play 18 holes of golf in the afternoon. You can't beat that. Yeah. You know, I was going to say there's a difference between the south and the north. It is quite a bit hotter down in Las Vegas, of course, in the summertime. But it's beautiful out in the rocks, and it's just it's a, it's desert. If you you can fall in love with parts of the desert. But the northern Nevada, we've got the mountains and hills. I don't consider it warm here, that hot. It, it gets warm, but maybe yeah, You have it a, few, down. a few days of 100 Where degrees. Where I live over on this side, it cools down at night because the cool air comes down out of Truckee and the hills. And yeah. Right here, it's really nice. It's just a lovely place to live. I live close Nevada's to a great state. There, there's a lot of great people. Yeah. And the warmth of the Nevadans, uh, when, you, when strangers, they meet on the street, they're friendly and helpful, and it's just a great place to live. And I... Uh, I would encourage everybody to want to live here, but keep... <laughs> so you've told me some great places to eat, and you've introduced to me some places from last time that I love to eat. Any updates on where you like to eat these days? I still like Bistro Napa at Atlantis. It's a great place. Um, you know, the best burgers, the Manhattan Deli, and they have a killer uh, chicken soup. Um, I also like to go to Ruby's Steakhouse. Oh, and I they love got it. A I was going to mention there. it. That's my favorite steakhouse, <laughs> right across from the the... the Peppermill. And, and, and Tamarack great. Junction has a great bison burger, if you like that. And they have that, <laughs> and they have sport videos there, too. Yeah, it's good stuff. Anyway, great place to eat here in Reno. Tom, thanks for coming on. You've got uh, early voting starting in about a week or so. When this comes up, it'll be early voting time. Yeah, it'll be the 26th is early voting. Um, please check me out. But if you want a true conservative, I'm the only true conservative running. And I'm looking for your vote in the primary on, on uh, June 12th. One last thing. We didn't talk about the poll. We didn't actually talk about the poll. There was a poll that Tartanian put out. 700 uh, folks were in the poll. It was conducted by a, a company down in New Orleans. And it shows Heller with 30% base. Yeah, it was 31% per- of the... 30, yeah. Basically, it said only 31% of yeah. likely Nevada Republicans want Heller renominated, basically wanting him back. Yeah. And over 51% want someone else. And there were still some undecided of about 18%. Yeah. But they want someone else. I'm the someone else because I'm the true conservative... And I really solicit your vote because I will do you right. There's a good chance that Heller will not get 50%. So if all the other voters would pull together and vote for you, you'd have a new senator to run for, new candidate to run against the Democrats here. And in the I great certainly will win the general. And I know that Heller cannot win the general. It just won't happen. You know, I, I independents uh, are very sick of him. Well, yeah. And they're not going to vote in this election. He, he can't possibly win without independents. And I'm going to get the independents. So, you know, a little more detail. Why are the independents not supporting him? A lot of independents people, left the Republican people don't Party. Like everybody, I, I, I can't just say for just independents, but independents and Republicans, they don't like him because he flip-flops all the time. He's a flip-flopping, grinning heller who will never focus on doing the right thing. And, and the Democrats aren't going to vote for him because they have a candidate. And right now, the Democrats are hammering him, the Republicans are hammering him, and he's just going to have too much baggage out there to overcome. Trump is hammering him. Trump is hammering him. Even though he's, it's an interesting combination, he put a lot of pressure on him to vote for the uh, last... Well, yeah, but but, you, but he can't count on, on Heller. And I know that yeah. voters in Nevada, they want someone that will support the president it, and his agenda. It is a weirdly weird environment right now. Anything can happen. Anything can happen in this election. Yep, I'm sure that I'm going to win, and I'm ready to start the general as soon as this, this next couple of weeks are over. All right, Tom, this is going to be fun in editing this show. <laughs> yep. Good luck. Good luck, Bill. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead, and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail. Go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. And go over here, watch a couple more videos. Link to our website at republicanmenisclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.